See the outfit today. And uh, contacts today are, let's go get these out of the way right away. So in my, this eye right here, it's flames. And this eye is my eye. So hazel brown. So there's the eyes. <laughs> All right, so if there's any kids out there, put their names up. I'll give them a shout out. Thank you, thank you. Uh, cool outfit they said on uh, on Facebook. Yes, this is my uh, old saloon bartender costume um, with my not costume hat. This is a real hat. Classic derby hat. All right, let's see. All right, so we do have some kids out there, Tegan and Mia. Hi, Tegan and Mia. Good to see you all. Welcome to story time today. Should be a good one. Oh, I look very dapper. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My shiny saloon bartender guy. All right. So let's get today started with the fact for the day. Really enjoying this just opening to a fact. So that's what I'm going to try and do. And if it's not one we've already done, then I will do it. All right. I don't know if I did this one. But if I did, I'm going to re relearn it. Yep. All right. Where does our garbage go? Hmm. Ever wondered where our garbage goes? You are about to find out. Have you ever wondered... Oh, see, I just said that. Have you ever wondered where the garbage truck takes our trash or your trash? It depends on where you live. In some places, trash is hauled to special plants where it is burned to make power. In other places, it goes into a machine that breaks it down into tiny pieces. Some goes to recycling centers to be sorted, but most household trash goes to a landfill. At a landfill, huge bulldozers and loaders push dirt over the trash piles all day long. Mountains of buried trash get higher and higher. Inside the landfill, some things, food, paper, rope, clothing, will break down or decompose. In a few months or years, other things like plastic, Tin, cans, shoes, diapers take many, many years to decompose. Recycling is an important way to help to reduce trash in landfills. So over here it says, Modern garbage trucks were invented in the U.S. in the early 1900s. Did not know that. Recycled plastic bottles can be made into shopping bags, t-shirts, and sweaters, Insulation for coats and sleeping bags and carpeting. Wow, I didn't know all that. So over here is that the modern dump truck that there are, yeah, garbage truck they were talking about that was invented in the States in the 1900s. And then there's a bag made from recycled plastic. Pretty cool. Over here... When you make something new and useful out of something old, it's called upcycling. Upcycling is another way to help our planet stay cleaner. Trash can even be made into art. And here in Queensland, Australia, they made a big whale tail out of the garbage. Look at that. How cool is that? So yeah, there's the big landfill and there's the dozers moving the garbage around. Yep. How many of you have been to um, 
the dump and seen what your local dump looks like. I know I have, and they sure look like they're always working hard. Dory's attacking me over here. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. And there's always, always so many seagulls. Does anybody know why there's so many seagulls at the dump? What kind of bird is a seagull? All right, let's move into our first story. This first story is from... Well, to be completely honest, I found it in my collection of old books, but I don't remember it. So we're going to give it a try and see what it's all about. And if you, for some reason you see me stop abruptly and toss the book, it's because it's really dated <laughs> and not appropriate. Um, but it looks like it's going to be okay, and it's called... Today was a terrible day. How many people have had terrible days? I like to say I don't have terrible days anymore. I have terrible moments in the day. But I can change those moments from terrible moments to good moments with positive thoughts. Yeah, that's what I do. That's the way I work it. So Today Was a Terrible Day by Patricia Riley Giff. Illustrated by Susanna Nutty. All right. Today was a terrible day. It started when I dropped my pencil. Mrs. Tyler asked, Ronald Morgan, why are you crawling under the table like a snake? Now all the children call me Snakey. Hey, Kitty Black Soul, how you doing? Oh, I miss seeing you perform, kiddo. Can't wait. When Miss Taylor told us to take out last night's homework, I noticed that my mother had forgotten to sign mine. I quickly signed it for her so she wouldn't get in trouble, but Miss Taylor said, Ronald Morgan, it's a crime to sign other people's names, and you spelled your mother's name wrong. All the children laughed. Oh, don't be sorry. You're never late. And these are always on YouTube later on, too, so you can go back and watch them if you ever miss them. So, yeah. Hi, kitty. Later, when Billy was reading, he's in the satellite group, I got hungry and my stomach made noises. I tiptoed to the closet and ate a salami sandwich in the closet. But I had the wrong bag. It was Jimmy's lunch. Ronald Morgan, is that you chewing? Miss Tyler asked. All the children looked at me, and Jimmy cried because he, he didn't want my sandwich. That's fair. Good thing it was an accident, though. Like, he didn't eat his sandwich on purpose, but still. Then, when Alice was reading, she's in the Mariners, my group had to do a workbook page. I didn't remember how to do it, so I asked Rosemary. Don't you know how even how to even how don't you even know how to do that? Rosemary asked. And she's the in the Ooh, I don't like that. And she's in the dumb group just like me. I don't like that word. He's awfully hard on himself. After I finished the work page, I wrote my initials on the thirsty sheet and went to the hallway for a drink of water. Mrs. Gallup's third grade class was having recess, and I stood in line with them. Hey, Johnny, I said, and he said hi to me. He showed me how to hold my finger over the faucet. Some of the water landed on the floor, most of it on Joy, Farley, Joy Farley's dress. Uh-oh. Dangerous on the floor, too. Not good on the dress and not good on the floor. Mrs. Gallup took me to Miss, to Miss Tyler and said, Ronald Morgan may never get to third grade if he doesn't learn how to behave himself. And I heard Rosemary say, Ronald Morgan may never get to third grade anyway. He still can't read. Uh-oh.
Boy, we can be mean to each other sometimes. During recess, we went outside to play ball. I played left field because I don't catch very well. Only one ball came near me. I ran for it. I missed, and my ice cream money fell out of my pocket. You just lost the game, Snakey, Billy yelled, and Tom said, What did you expect from that kid? <clears throat> when lunchtime came, I had no money for ice cream. I watched Jimmy eat my peanut butter sandwich. He said he'd starve to death without it. So all I had was half of Rosemary's candy bar and one of Billy's cookies. Not the healthiest of lunches. After lunch, Mrs. Tyler called the Rockets to the reading circle. I'm a rocket. Rosemary read the first sentence and Tom read the next one. They didn't make any mistakes today. When it was my turn, I said, Sally was a horse, Miss Tyler said. Ronald Morgan, that's not right, Rosemary said. Sally saw a horse, and Tom said, Some rocket you are. It has been a tough day for him, hasn't it? It was almost time to go home, Mrs. Tyler said. I think the plant monitor has forgotten to water the plants again. Guess who the plant monitor is? Uh-oh. I got up and watered all the plants, but while I was doing the last one, the best one, I looked out the window. Somehow I knocked the pot off the windowsill. Oh, no. Oh, stress. When it was finally time to go home, Mrs. Tyler gave me a note. Ronald Morgan, she said, take this note home. Try to read it by yourself. If you can't, I'm sure your mother will help you. On the way home, I read the note. Dear Ronald, I'm sorry you had such a sad day. Tomorrow will be a happy day because it's my birthday. You and I will make it happy. Love, Mrs. Tyler. Hey, I read the whole note by myself. I can read. Aw, such a nice note. Wait till I tell Michael. He's my best friend. Hello, Michael. This is Snakey. Guess what? I just found out I can read. And guess what else? It's Mrs. Tyler's birthday. Yay. I think I'll bring her a plant. I know she needs one. Oh, I liked that. All except for the one part that was a great book. See, you can change a terrible day into a good day. It's up to you. Ball's in your court. What do you guys think of the facial hair today? Got the chops. Did a little something different today. Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Do you like? Yeah? Yeah, you like that? Sad day for him. Yeah, but it turned around, didn't it? The day totally turned around. It's a great way to end the day. <clears throat> All right. Let's move on to our next book. It's a fun one. Angus All Aglow by Heather Smith and Alice Carter. Angus liked sparkly things. Who doesn't? I like sparkly things too. On point. All right. Looks great. Excellent. Thank you. You like that? It's a little different. Just the chops. Figured it was very salon, uh, saloon like salon. All right, the rainbow sequins on his sister's tutu. Tutu? Did you guys hear that? Okay, that was funny. All right, the rainbow sequins on his sister's tutu. Whew, that was tough. 
The sun's reflection on Baker Lake in the summer. The diamond studs on the collar of his dog, Sherlock. Look at the dress, the pretty dress sparkling. And then over there. See the sparkling on the dog collar? So cute. Cute dog, too. Angus liked sparkly words, too. Lustrious. Everybody say it with me. Lustrious. Rolled off his tongue. Scintillating. Oh, that's a fun one, too. Made his eyebrows dance. Watch. Can you make your eyebrows dance? Scintillating. Hmm? Just saying the word gleaming made his mouth smile. Big smiles. Lustrious. Scintillating. Gleaming. Those are great words. Glistening was his favorite because hidden in glistening is listening. And Angus liked sparkly things so much he felt as though he could hear them. Have you ever felt like you could hear something sparkling? <laughs> yeah, yeah, big brother smiles. Um, have you? Have you ever heard, like, you looked at something and you, you swear you heard it sparkling. I know I have. The nighttime stars crackled like campfire. The metal taps on his sister's dance shoes whiz, bang, popped like fireworks. His sapphire studded scissors sizzled like frying bacon. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Can you just imagine some of the sounds that you might hear from, from sparkling things? I can, completely. And those were some really good descriptors. All right. Angus's favorite sparkly thing was Grandma June's necklace. It had five strands of color, colorful glass beads that sounded like popcorn being popped in a metal pot. One day, Grandma June noticed Angus admiring her necklace. She slipped it off over his head. It's all yours, she said. Angus felt the twinkling deep inside his belly. It was his inner sparkle, fizzy and warm. Angus glowed from the inside out. See her necklaces? She had beautiful necklaces. And then there, look at that. Five strands. So pretty. The next morning, Angus decided to wear Gr Grandma June's necklace to school. His sister said, Angus, that necklace doesn't really match the rest of your outfit. Why don't you wear a scarf instead? Angus said, Scarves don't sparkle. That's not true. I have a few sparkly scarves. His father said, Why don't you save that necklace for a special occasion, like Mardi Gras? Angus said, Why can't every day be Mardi Gras? I like his way of thinking. His mother said, Angus, the thing is, is, that necklace is really bright. Angus said, that's the point. I agree. Heads turned as Angus walked into his classroom. Could they hear the popping too? Johnny Cole put his hands up, put his face in his hands and yelled, My eyes! My eyes! Others joined in. Too bright! Too bright! Brett Andrews said, Sparkles, Angus? Sparkles? His classmates' laughter was like down, like a downpour of freezing rain. Angus ran into the hallway, where his inner sparkle fizzled like a wet firecracker. He tried to pull the necklace over his head, but the strands twisted together. A thick loop got caught on his ear. Angus yanked hard. 
The glass beads seemed to lose their color as they bounced off the floor. The only sound Angus could hear was the shower of sad plinkety plunk plinks. Plinkety plinks as they hit the floor. Look at that. They're everywhere. Oh no. Just then, Melody Daniels appeared. As she stepped into the hallway, her foot bumped a lone bead. It rolled toward Angus. It seemed to move in slow motion. Angus and Melody followed it with their eyes. They watched as it rolled to a wibbly-wobbly stop against the rubber sole of Angus's sneaker. Angus frowned and kicked the bead away. Then, turning his back on Melody, he walked back into the classroom. That night, Angus went to his sister's dance recital. Tap shoes glimmered and sequins shimmered, but Angus didn't hear a whiz, bang, or a pop. At bedtime, Sherlock snuggled in close, but the diamond studs on his collar jabbed and poked. Angus pushed Sherlock away. There's the dance recital. Poor Sherlock. Poor Angus. The next morning, under the red maple tree, Melody was waiting for Angus. In her hand was a brown paper bag. She reached in and scooped out a handful of beads. It was a pretty necklace, she said. It looked like a party on a string. She brought the beads to her ear. Sounds like popping candy, you know, the kind that fizzes in your mouth. Suddenly, the world around Angus exploded with sound. The beads in Melody's hands cricked, cracked, popped like hot corn kernels. The ruby buttons on her cardigan, bu uh, cardigan buzzed like a bazillion fireflies. The rainbow ribbons in her hair cling, clang, rang like a parade. The two friends sat together admiring the beads while the leaves of the red maple sizzled above them. I love maple trees. It's a good friend, hey? Melody is a really good friend. I almost called her Emily, but Emily's my niece. Melody pulled a ribbon from her hair. Maybe you can make a new necklace. Angus had a better idea. With his sapphire-studded scissors, he snipped the ribbon in two and threaded the be beads onto each piece. He struggled to tie the ends. I can help, said Melody. Together they made two new bracelets. Angus passed one to Melody. It's all yours. Melody beamed. What a great idea. Angus clutched the second bracelet with his hand. His fingers tingled as the beads hummed with happiness. But underneath the thrum, 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 Angus could hear a dark whisper. My eyes, my eyes, too bright, too bright. His inner sparkle quivered like a flickering flame. Melody reached out and touched the bracelet. It matches your outfit perfectly, she said. The dark, whisper dis the dark whisper disappeared like a wisp of smoke in the breeze. Angus slipped the bracelet over his hand. The beads zizzle, zazzle, zapped like lightning in a stormy sky. Look at that. I can see it. I can see the sounds. Every head turned as Angus and Melody walked into the classroom. Of course it did. A gorgeous bling on their wrists? Yas. Angus glowed from the inside out. The 
the end. Story number two. All right, let's see. On point, what does this say? I love this book and Agus's responses. Yes, it is such a good book. What's this now? Want to become famous? Buy followers? Uh, no, thank you. I'll just keep the followers I have. Look at this, guys. Ha 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 ha. Don't do those things. Such a trap. Sparkles are good things. Yes, I love sparkles. I love the sounds. The sounds. I can just imagine the sounds of, of things in, in my head. And I love that. Like, right now, I can hear. Like, right now, I can see one of my belts over there. And it's sparkling in the corner of my eye. And I can hear that. It's, a, it's almost a twinkle sound. It's not a loud one. It's a twinkle sound that I hear. Yeah. All right. Shall we move on to our last and final book? Oh, be it's quickly becoming one of my favorites. I want to add it to my own collection once I find it. Um, so, yeah. So, want to know what it is? Are you excited like I am? Yeah? Let's see some hearts or some comments if you want to see the next book. Yes, yes, cool. Got a yes over there. Shall we move on to the last book? Are you excited? I'm excited. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Last book. All right. Here we go. Here it is. It's coming. <gasps> Everyone needs sparkles in their life. I agree. Everyone needs sparkles in their life. And if you don't, go out and find the sparkles that make you happy. I rhinestone things when I when I need a little stress relief. Hmm? What do you think of that? All right, I'll stop fooling around and we'll move on to the last book, quickly becoming one of my favorites, hopefully soon one of yours. What does that say? Tegan doesn't want it to be the last book. Oh, well, you're welcome to go back and play the video over again. Yes, and come back on Thursday and Saturday and Sunday at 3 p.m., and we will continue this then. But you're more than welcome. Uh, they, they are on my Facebook page. And you can go to my YouTube channel. Which would be great if you could all go to my YouTube channel. Follow, subscribe, hit the bell. It helps out immensely um, with, with, my, with where my YouTube videos reach. So the more people that could do that, the better. Um, that would be great. And yeah, you can always replay them. And like I say, I'm, I'm here four times a week. So, and I have a show coming Thursday night, Thursday night, woo, with Cyber Stash, it's gonna be fun, a great cast, um, I should actually go and post that, I will post that to my Instagram and Facebook today, so you guys can see that, and go, and if you decide you want to come join in on the festivities, it should be fun, and... I also have one on the 28th and some other stuff in the works. But yeah, for now, let's get on to the last book. Here it is, my last book of today. Are you ready? Okay. It's called Maiden and Princess. Oh, I just... I'm, oh, falling in love with this book. All right, perfect. Here we go. Maiden and Princess by Daniel Houck and Isabel Galupo. And art by Becca Human. Human. I always want to say Human. I don't know why. I think it's because of all those... Yeah, never mind. I don't know why. Okay, here we go. Once in a far away kingdom, a call was made to all to find a son, to find their son a worthy bride. The king and queen, yeah, to find, okay, sorry, I got lost there. You know what, I'm just going to start that over again. Let's just begin from the beginning again, because I really got confused for a moment. So, I'm back, here I am. Once in a faraway kingdom, a call was made to all. To find their son a worthy bride, the king and queen would host a ball. 
There they are, the king and the queen. And there's their son. And there he is, the, the town guy. I want. I don't know what he is, but he's announcing it to the villagers. Oh, I'm getting descriptive here. <laughs> the ladies in the village will be happy to be in. Were happy to be invited, except for one young maiden who wasn't that excited. That was me. This maiden was quite special, the bravest of all in all the land. She knew the prince from battle, giving her the upper hand. The prince is smart and strong, she confided in her mother, but if I'm being honest, I see him as a brother. Her mother said, just go and have a bit of fun. The prince might not be right, but you could meet the one. So the maiden put on a gown and headed to the ball. She marveled at all the people who filled the sparkling hall. I, I, again, I love this dragon too. Like, look at the dragon. I want a pet dragon. And then there's the hall. Look at all the people. There's a lot of people there. The villagers flocked over the young over to the young maiden's side, and they insisted that she would make the best royal bride. You look magnificent. You're wise, brave, and true. There's no doubt in my mind that the prince will fall for you. Very nice of them all to say those things. Even the king and queen approached her with a smile. You must come see our son and dance with him a while. She's very beautiful. He's handsome too. Pink, if you're still here, I want a prince outfit like this. Take a look. Help me make it happen, costume woman. That would be fun. Did I just see... Hey, Frankie! How you doing, buddy? Love you. I've been, I've been watching. I've been stalking you, my friend. Keep up the good work. Bless your heart. Can't wait to work together again soon. Anytime you want. The maiden was quite flustered, and so she said with care... Please pardon me, your majesties, but I must get some air. Boy, she looks distressed. You know, he looks concerned, though, too. See how she looks so upset? He looks concerned for her, which is very nice. Who knows? Who knows, right? Let's see. She fled up to the balcony and looked out at the sky. The future prince made her want to cry. A, oh, oh, a future with a prince made her want to cry. I can relate to that one. I don't mean to bother you, said a voice with a, so a, a voice soft and kind, but you seem quite upset. May I ask what's on your mind? It's the queen. A beautiful girl emerged who took the maiden's breath away. She sat down close to the maiden and asked if she could stay. Oh, it's oh, it's someone different. It's not the queen. Who is it? 
Soon the maiden had forgotten about the prince and his throne. Summoning all her courage, she took the girl's hands in her own. So there she is there. So pretty. And there they are. They're looking. And then, then over here. Look at that. So pretty. So pretty. Then the doors burst open. The king and queen walked through. There's our precious daughter. We've looked all over for you. The maiden's jaw fell open. Her head was feeling light. She had fallen for the princess on this wondrous starry night. Let me see where, where are the parents. They can't see the parents in there, but there they are. Start a look. The royal couple could feel the magic in the air. The queen said to the king, They're a perfect pair. Oh, who knew? Who knew? The maiden felt quite bashful, but quickly stole a glance. She saw the princess smiling and asked her, Want to dance? No! Oh, yay! Such a good book. They held each other close as they spun across the floor, and when they shared a kiss, their hearts began to soar. Everybody's watching, too. They live in a great village. It has issues. I don't know why Instagram has issues, but it always has issues, and it freezes. It's on the same Wi-Fi that you guys are on. It just does not... The live feed just is not... It breaks up so much more. So, like... The Facebook feed and the YouTube feeds are, are, are not quite that bad. Woo! My armband slid down. All right. Soon the maiden and the princess were seldom seen apart. They filled their days together with books, laughter, and art. They rode horses and sang and picked wildflowers flowers at dawn. They practiced their aim and faced adventure head on. Yeah, it sounds like they had a lot of fun, have a lot of fun together. And the dragon's there too. See the dragon, my favorite dragon. Yes, dragon. Other than Pete's dragon from the cartoon, not the digital remastered one. When the day finally came to prove their love was true, the maiden and the princess happily said. I do. And a red dragon, too. Not just yes dragons, yes red dragons, yes. So cool. So cool. The end. The end. I'm stargazing at the end. Yep. Yeah. Can't tell you what the stars are. I'm not even going to try because I'll get them all wrong. Well, that brings us to the end of story time today, my friends. Just for today. I will be back on Thursday for another story time with Shane on you. I have a show also Thursday night, Cyberstash. Check out my social media. I will post uh, later on today um, about that. It'll be in my stories. It'll be on my feeds. Yay! Yay, Katie, yes, come watch. It'll be fun. It's a great, um, it's a great show. Lots of great, uh, different kinds of artists. Um, Miss Angelina Starchild will be there, myself, and my, one of my drag daughters, uh, Addie Pose, will be there. She's a phenomenal little youngin'. Um, 
not even 18 yet. Uh, she's a good little, good little uh, person who lives out here in Oktoks, so that's kind of how we connected. I'll try to be there. Cool. It would be love to have you guys there. Yeah. Mia loves dragons. She wants a blue one. Another fantastic book. Love this one as well. Mia loves dragons. She wants a blue one. A blue one would be cool. Time? What time for what? For my... Uh... Jordan, somebody's asking me for time. My time for the show to Thursday night is, I think it starts at 9.30? 9.30 Thursday night? Uh, I think the room opens up at 9 around there. And then should be a good show. The show, yeah, 9.30, my friend. 9.30 Thursday. It's called Cyber Stash. I will post to my page today, so keep an eye on my Facebook, Instagram. Um, what's this? Perfect. I'll be there. Excellent. I'm glad you'll be there, but I'm going to see you for your birthday uh, celebration tomorrow anyways, kiddo, so we'll talk about that more then. That's my other child that I'm speaking with, uh, Andy Social or Jordan on Facebook. Um, so yeah. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you here for Storytime with Shane on Saturday at 3 p.m. Any other events, just check out my social media, and we will go from there. Peace out, guys. Love you much. Thanks for tuning in. It was great. A lot of fun. So much fun. If you're looking for contacts or costumes, go to the costume shop uh, on Blackfoot Trail. Uh, it's a great place to get anything you need for drag, for cosplay, you name it, for Halloween, anything like that. You can shop online. You can visit the store. They're open 12 to 5 every day except for Saturday, or except for Sunday right now. Um, minimal staff, you know, they're following precautions and all that stuff. So all that good stuff. But, yeah, you can order online and have it shipped to you, or you can pick it up. So that's it for today. Peace out. Love you all. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you on Thursday.